whole bunch of people waiting. Five to minutes the later. No sound. They're saying no, no sound, Thomas. No sound. Muted. No audio. I we hear you out here, but probably. Ten minutes later. <laughs> they still have no audio. Oh, wait, they're saying that they hear me, but they're not hearing you, Thomas. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Disclosure Tonight. While Thomas is working on the technical difficulties... Yeah, Thomas will return shortly while we move forward with disclosure tonight. Okay, so uh, everybody hang tight. We're going to reboot the show. And we'll, yeah. the audience felt that you were doing a Marcel Marceau imitation. Oh, I'm not doing a Marcel, Mar Mar uh, um, uh, Marcel, whoever the hell he is. No, we're getting ready for Halloween. But, oh, shit, my, my freaking... Where did the chat go? I lost chat now. Let me figure out where chat went. Uh, chat screen capture properties needs to go to bed. 324K. There we go. Mike, how you doing, Mike? Welcome, to everybody, to Saturday night. The Saturday night before, actually, the Sunday night before Halloween. Hopefully, everybody have a good time over last night. Uh, Gary and I hung out with Luke, and we were watching the, the, the feeds in uh, Florida and over in uh, Bourbon Street, looking for nuns. You know what I mean, nuns. These kind of nuns, but hanging out looking for nuns. Yes, I think I finished off the night with like 22. Uh, Gary had like four or five. I'm looking, at, remember, I'm looking at this on a 10-foot screen. It's a smaller screen. Either way, it went really well. Yeah, you're My, doing good. Yeah, you look like a vampire on it. I could see it. Oh, 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 you better believe it. You know, I could look like an alien. But, oh gosh, my teeth match yours now, Mike. I'm not seeing you at the back. I'm not seeing you at the back. Oh, yes. Okay, here you go. Boom. There you go. Can you see me now, girls? Yep. Yes. Okay, there you go. You know, you know Halloween, right? Halloween is the one day of the year, the one weekend of the year, that we have all the people who are out there that are actually aliens. They could actually come out. And be out there wearing masks, wearing outfits, look like they're wearing makeup or not, but they're really not. But they're actually the aliens. Couldn't that be a uh, an opportunity? We saw it in ET, the extraterrestrial, didn't we, Nunya? You're on mute, Susan. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, yes, Nunya. Hairdressed as a nun. I should have put that as my screen thing today. Oh well. Oh yeah. <laughs> What are you? Yeah, uh, 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 gotta have it's, it's actually a, a Halloween here. You're, you know, because we're a day before. Well, you. it's the thirtieth now, isn't it? Yes. So it's all Hallowed Eve before the Halloween itself. Well, isn't Halloween? See, it's not an Australian tradition. It's, trying it's to the thirty-first. Oh, is it thirty-first? Thirty-first, last day of October, girl. Oh, well, there you go. Oh yeah. I learned something. I learned something from you again. 
There you go. About learning some things. I haven't introduced anybody because, well, we're just having some fun with it. But I do want to introduce the people in the back. I want to welcome in Lee. Welcome in Lee. How you doing today, my friend? I'm doing good. Doing good. Good to have you here. Also, we've got Michael Sokoloff coming to us from the great country of Canada. Welcome, Michael. Hi. And uh, in Canada, it's Sunday night, the 29th. Well, it's still sun. It's still the 29th here too. Is what is it? Ten, what is it? Ten seventeen there now. Thirtieth in Australia, I take it. Well, it's the thirtieth in Australia. It's ten seventeen. Are you on Eastern time? No, I'm on Mountain time. Oh, you're on Mountain. Okay, so you're only at freaking eight seventeen then. Yeah, you're younger. <laughs> <laughs> you're younger than Susan by a number of hours. Also in the back, we've got Nanya Business. Welcome, Susan. How you doing, my dear lady? I'm doing really well, Thomas. You're looking well. Yeah. You've had a bit of dental work, I see. Oh, yeah. It's this time of the year I get to come out and have some fun. This is the <laughs> one time of year I can bring out the faces and thought, have some fun with it. I thought you were already out. Oh, of course I'm out, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's, too, it's too difficult living in the freaking coffin or in the closet, for that matter. you got to come out and enjoy your life as much as you can. I should have done it earlier. I should have done it earlier. I, I lost too many good years of my life, I tell you. It was probably a good thing. Also, someone else who, who couldn't relate. Let's bring in Patrick Fogarty. Patrick, welcome back. There, there's no Patrick here anymore. It's uh, it's EB3 now. It's EB3. EB3. Oh, did you steal it on your flying saucer in the back of your I vehicle? Did. That's what I just went to go do. That's why I'm all winded. <laughs> we couldn't tell. Welcome, EBE8. Good to see you, my friend. Yes. Also in the back, we're coming to us in the great state of California, Southern California, uh, for that matter. Let's welcome in Faze Will. How you doing, Faze Will? Hey, hey Thomas. Uh, happy Sunday. Funny Sunday. Good to see you, man. Good to see you as well, my friend, as always. Uh, also in the back, we've got Mr. Disco Lights, because you're the only one with Disco Lights tonight, because... Uh, Hollywood Herald is in the chat, but he's not in the back. Let's welcome in Stephen Timir. Welcome, Stephen. Hey, Tom. I like the hair. It looks good seeing you with all that hair, dark hair. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I don't want to look old. Oh, I do have a one here where I can look old, can't I? It's called, not my twin, Time Machine. Ah, uh, here we go. All right, let's uh, go ahead and bring this up. Yeah, wow. I've been waiting around for disclosure for all these years. And it still hasn't <laughs> happened. What the heck? <laughs> It'll age you waiting, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. This is about what I'm going to look like when I'm old. That's a scary thing. When you get old, yes. Oh, yeah, I'm old enough. 55. <laughs> it's not just speed limit. Well, at least we're up to 60 in Washington State. Let's go ahead and also welcome. You look in. like a bit, bit like Bruce Willis there. Oh, God. <laughs> you do, you do. I'm, I was thinking, who does that look like? Bruce Willis. Yeah, this is old disclosure. <laughs> old disclosure with a logo. Do you like the moon I've put behind? I did this on accident before, and I did it I again. Did. Looks good. Yeah, I think I'll look better on t-shirts that way. And if we're gonna do sweatshirts, we're gonna do the logo with a zipper because zippers are nicer. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, but let's, that's wraps us up to our friend, Mike, 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 Disclosure Mike. How you doing, my friend? Doing well. And uh, this is another surprise episode of Disclosure tonight. Should be a lot of fun for everybody. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Girl, this is one of those episodes we're going to have on. We're going to watch, but we're not going to tell. And we're going to turn it off after this broadcast is done. It is off the air forever. <laughs> Oh, I know. Got to have fun with it. At least I've got a mask. I'm not quite to match, match mics, but close enough. So it's been an interesting Sunday. Hopefully everyone's had a good Sunday. This is just kind of one of those days for us to kind of come together, hang out on Disclosure tonight, talk with friends. Uh, is there anything on anyone's mind from the audience, from the back of, doesn't have to be Disclosure. It's just after hours, if you want to call it, not quite because that's, over on Space Star Radio, but we're just here to talk about what's to talk about, Patrick. Yeah, so there was that plane crash. Was it like... Oh, Patrick, uh, cheers, by the way. Thank you, thank you. 
Oh, cheers. Cheers. And cheers. Hold on. If I go Bing. right. I got gotcha. you. There you go. There. There. Okay. Um, so there was that plane that went down the Malaysian Airlines flight years oh, back, no. and it, it, it was quickly released. They, everyone said, oh, it's, it was bullshit. But for some reason, has anyone else seen that come back into the, the, the sphere of something Oh, my God. Something there has have come been out? so many schmucks up on, on Twitter about this, talking about the MH370. And I just want to go ahead and say it out there exactly. MH370 did not crash. It was, it was clearly... It was clearly, absolutely thrown through a time warp or some kind of a warp portal and zapped out of reality. So all that, all the wreckage that we found, the wash up the islands, wash up to Africa, wash up the different parts, and it had the serial numbers on it to align with the plane. That's all fake, and they're just trying to pull the wool over your eyes. And I mean, like I thought it was it. known, it was shot down. I, I thought that was like fact that it was shot down. No, I, I thought the country's. Down. No. No. The guy no. who actually was the pilot actually practiced doing the runs on a simulator on his PC. Thank you, Microsoft, for training that the guy and giving him the opportunity to figure out how he was going to go ahead and bring that plane down. Well, you know, I guess it's better than Microsoft Word. That only taught me how to you know, plagiarize. And, and oh, so, I it guess it wasn't Word. It wasn't Word that got us there. It was our friend. Our, our friend here, our friend Clippy. You remember Clippy, the, the clip, uh, the oh, clipboard, right? Absolutely. Oh God! It we... was my first AI friend. Hey, write me a book report, Clippy. Not a problem. <laughs> yeah, but not really. Clippy can never get to what what people want her to go ahead and have. Anything from the audience? MH was taken from uh, for the lithium on board. Well, maybe. We'll have to figure that one out. Excuse me, do you have any antiques that you want to sell, Patrick? I know you're in the you're in the Northeast. Do you have any? You know, you watch. You know, I do. I do. I have some antiques. I have uh, a worn out uh, senator. Um, it, it, it's 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 still okay. I mean, a little tarnished. A little spit shine, she'll look great. I'll sell you uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. Oh, oh Gillibrand. Yes, we know Gillibrand. She's yeah, part she, of she's our get... disinformation movement, yes. Yeah, she's getting a little old, so maybe maybe it's time to, to retire her and sell her off to a tattooed chick in the Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything from the audience coming in? Everyone's quiet today, yeah. Susan, what was your day like today? Can we talk? My day was pretty good, actually. I did a lot of housework, cleaning the stubborn, the uh, stubborn, <laughs> the the sto stove top, uh, you know, the oven stove, you know, the things that the stove top. Did you make some stove top stuffing, or did you make some stove top popcorn? <laughs> no, I cleaned the dang thing, you know, like polished it and everything, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I actually, clean. I did. You know, I did that with the charbroiler yesterday. Luke said, I don't want to use the grill. And I go over to the grill and look at it. And it's like, no wonder why you don't want to use it. You haven't cleaned it in months. And I get out there with a scraper and get all the uh, cast iron grills and move them aside and clean all the stuff and fill it into the containers I have to pull out and put it in the trash. Yeah, I've got a 36 inch uh, uh, charbroiler in the kitchen. Best appliance I've ever got. My goodness. But I can see no, why I, just I didn't want to use OCD it. OCD out. <laughs> I, un I unpacked my OCD. <laughs> oh, yeah. I only burned myself on one finger, so not so bad. Wasn't this one, but this one, I think. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It looks like my piggy. <laughs> uh, so, looking at a site the other day, a couple of days ago, it's, um, I think it's called Re Real UFOs. Yeah. yeah, it's got some interesting stuff on it. Yeah, I think I may just need to get out. I've there never seen real of UFOs. Um, anyone else in the back? Has anyone else seen uh, real UFOs before? I know that they're all balloons, Hollywood Herald they're has really? been pointing us on a regular basis. We need to go ahead and watch the stuff that's over on Steve Brown's channel. Problem is, is Steve uses copyrighted music, and if we try to use Steve's stuff and show it on the channel. It screws with the whole algorithm and says, oh, look, you've used a piece that's monetized by another artist. So we're going to take the majority of your revenue and give it to this person because Steve used it on his broadcast. That makes it a bit more difficult to use his content. 
Now, I did have a chat GPT plugin that I was using for a period of time that actually will summarize stuff, lets you see what it was all about. But with the recent upgrade to chat GPT, it actually shut it down. Would you look at that? Talking about Hollywood, Harold enough, and he just joins the back. Welcome, Harold. Welcome, Reality Check. How are you? Harold. You still got the mute button on. Yeah, he'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm just going to say, uh, Rachel Osborne's been asking forever, man, for you to uh, do some of that fifth, that third eye stuff or consciousness stuff. Oh, consciousness. I am. Well, some people say you have to be in a state of mind for that. I've had a headache for a while. So if I wanted to go ahead and bring up my third eye and stuff right now, it's going to be a little difficult because my head is pounding here. It's been that way all day. Usually it's better in the morning than it is at night. Let's just say that. But yeah, we can get into some of that stuff some of these days. Yeah, we got interesting things coming. 2027 is not too far out. But then again, we've got Lee. Lee, I have your hand on my friend. Where do you want to take this conversation? I was wondering if anybody had caught that uh, Galileo Project was asking for video from um, October 20th about a UFO, uh, UAP possible sighting. Um, and they've requested through social media and through Twitter for anybody that has any um, video evidence to turn it over to them. Really? Galileo Project like Avi Lube? Yep. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. It's posted on Twitter. They're calling for anybody that has video footage of what uh, part of the United uh, States? Uh, New England area, New England states. It's New like, England. Well, if anyone in the yeah. New England area actually listened to me and actually went outside and looked up, if you saw anything, but yeah, if you jump over to the show, the maker of Avi Lube would like <laughs> you to know. I thought it was interesting. I didn't, and I haven't had much time to like check back in on it to see if anybody's reported anything but yeah. um apparently something something of interest happened on yeah. october 20th in the evening over uh, the new england states yeah 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 hey did any of you catch the conversation with rick Doty uh yesterday after disclosure tonight over on space star radio it was an interesting one wasn't it mike it was very interesting conversation i mean he was basically covering everything that he covers over here on a regular basis yeah. And it was all new over there. But I'll oh, tell you what I caught that was interesting. The uh, female co-host, um, she mentioned that they're going to be having a um, an announcement today in regards to um, our friend, uh, the... Uh, person who uh, Rick was talking about when they were asking about Area 51. Um, so it's uh, interesting because, let me see, I'm trying to see. I had to just give me a I mean, second. Here I thought they notes. were hopefully going to give us an announcement about Timmy Senor, but probably not. That'll just kind of happen. But um, No, Bob guy. Lazar. They were talking about Bob Lazar. Bob and, Lazar, yeah. Yes, there's another... Um, they're doing a, a book and the, the story is that Bob Lazar is writing or behind this book that's going to be coming out because he finally wants the truth to be known. And the story that's been told so far has been misrepresented by all these people covering the story. So he wants to set the, set the record straight and come out with the correct information about this story involving him didn't have any additional it's very i think it's very interesting it means that he's finally uh looking to not stay on the same story that he's he's been up until this point yeah. obviously that's going to change so what does that say about jeremy corbell who did the documentary about bob lazar or anybody else that covered that story it's really going to make them look stupid if he contradicts well, himself at all you got to remember there used to be some people on the show before, you know, take a walk on the wild side, if you know what I mean, who I were, mean. were really supportive of Bob Lazar in the past. And when I said that, oh, look, look at the whistleblower provisions. This gives Bob an opportunity to come forward and talk about the stuff that he hasn't been able to talk about. And they were just so upset and angry saying that he's already said enough 
why does this open the war the book for him? Because if he was telling the truth, and if he was talking about stuff, he could actually go to Congress and testify and be a whistleblower, couldn't he, Mike? He had the opportunity to do that. And the author of the book with him, or the co-author, is James Goodall. Oh. It's going to be coming out with the book. Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting. It always seems much... people out who coming out, Mike, and talking about stuff, it's always about a book tour, isn't it? It seems to be. Even Rick has a book that eventually is going to come out at one point. Thank you, Brendan. He doesn't know the exact date or time, but he's working on it. So everybody seems to have a book lately. Yeah. You know, I think we actually have to go ahead and create a uh, a partnership with Swiss Navy because we have Brendan England saying, well, Thomas, will this $10 Australian get me a bottle of Avi Lube? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how many ounces we deal with, but yes. We only trust Swiss, Swiss Navy as the best pur purveyor of lube. Oh, I've got to have some fun with it. Yeah, interesting to hear about that. Um, I've I've always had uh, a mixed bag with regards to um, Bob Lazar, and I haven't hid my, hid my truth. I've always said exactly how I feel. He said some things. It's interesting, but I'm not all in because there's too many things that he said, Mike. That if it was true, he would have been having someone from the FBI knocking on his door and hauling his ass into prison if it was true, right? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. So everyone that's been following this story knows that a, a lot of it didn't add up. Even Joe Rogan, who did that long interview with yeah. him and Corbell said, there are facts that don't make a lot of sense. But he also then said that Lazar talked to him off the air and explained it away. And it made more sense to Rogan after he got the secret explanation from Bob Lazar. And I shared with you that I believe that it had to do with his so-called in work in intelligence, Lazar, or his claims of working in, in intelligence, which is but why Lazar, his wait, 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 wait a minute. Now Lazar is saying he was working in intelligence? He was alluding to it to Rogan to explain uh, the lack of academic credentials. So, yeah, his story always has a story, it seems. It sounds like my ex-wife, <laughs> who had an answer for everything and was something who was a compulsive liar and couldn't stop lying no matter what came out of her mouth. They couldn't believe anything. So now he's coming up with additional reasons that he's throwing out today. Yeah. Plus, he's going to have a new book that's going to supposedly explain all of this, and it's going to change the narrative of the story that's been put out about him so far that, by the way, he was actively participating in those stories. He was working with George Knapp when it was covered. He was working with Corbell yeah. when it was covered. So now he's claiming he had no control over people giving out misinformation. That's that's going to be very funny to see that information come out in the future. I want, I'd like to see that book. Yeah. It's going, to be, it's going to be good for a laugh, I think. Yeah, well... Books are books. They sell. He gets an advance. He has to go ahead and recoup against royalty, against it is his advancement and the royalties pile in. Hopefully, he'll get some money out of this. Maybe. Oh, he will. Know. No, he will. Does he have endorsements from any other ufologists? Like, uh, oh gosh, uh, um, what's her name again? Linda Moulton Howell or Richard Dolan? No. No. No, unfortunately uh, for him. No. Does he have any, uh, how about from uh, Jeremy Corbell? Does he have an endorsement from Jeremy? I don't think Jeremy is too happy that he's writing this book or being a part of this book that's going to contradict what Corbell already covered about him. Because it's clear, Lazar said it, that what's been told about him has been wrong and misinformation, and he wants to set the record straight. So, so he's going to change the story. Oh, hold on, hold on. Where's the freaking... Let's rewind that for a second. The stories that have been told about him right. are the stories that he's told about himself. So now he's... <laughs> exactly. Now you got the point. You Hold got on. The message. He's been around for a while. Huh? 
So right. he's saying the stories that came out in the in the past before about him, which were the stories that he told, aren't yeah. accurate. And now he's coming out and actually telling the truth in a new tell-all book that he all wants you to buy for nineteen ninety-five, available on Amazon. Maybe more. That's right. Absolutely. But you know the the author that's working with him, James Goodall. He also has written books on the SR-71, which means there's connections into Area 51 because they developed the Blackbird at 51. So I don't know if that's part of him trying to come across credible, um, because the author has some credibility. But as far as Lazar's story constantly changing, uh, this should be interesting, like I said before. Oh, my God. Here we go. There we go, almost there. Occupation. Stand up philosopher. What? Stand up philosopher. I oh, that's it. Oh, I, you got to play this. Oh, oh, oh my God. I know. I got to make sure the audio is up loud enough for the audience. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. Stand up philosopher. Less the vapor of human experience into a viable and logical comprehension. Oh, I love, you know, that's a description. Of Lazar to a degree. And how does Maud react to that? Oh, a bullshit artist. <laughs> <laughs> a bullshit artist. Yes, exactly. Exactly. A bullshit artist. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I lost it. Vapor of human experience. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's continue on with this conversation. Here we go. Did you bullshit last week? You know, Bob's going to say, no. well, yes, I did bullshit last week, but I have this new book coming out. You go ahead and correct that. No. Did you try to bullshit some, last uh, week? Interesting responses are coming out of the audience. Uh, Christian Morales is saying, I'll hear Bob Lazar out. I think it's unfair to call him an attention seeker. He hasn't wanted anything to do with the UFO community for a while. You guys got balls for attacking I'm not attacking Lazar. Bob. I'm calling out the exact way I felt. And if Bob is saying everything that came out before from me wasn't the truth. But these are all the stories that Bob has told people like Lazar and countless other media sources. But now I've got this new book coming out that tells the truth. Why wasn't he telling the truth before? Christian, join the back. You know the number. No, Christian said earlier in the chat that he's so negative on disclosure that he stopped calling into the show. Oh, sounds like he's been hanging out with Swan. <laughs> oh, I certainly hope not. Oh, my God. What a mess. What a freaking disaster. That is. Wow. Unfortunately. <laughs> oh. But we'll have the, uh, the uh, individual coming on the show regularly like... Uh, Dr. Grant Strine, who I think um, moving well, he forward in the future in, will help but, out. You know, we had him like in that. yesterday as a one-time affair. We may have some other people to show up. You never know. It was great to have Grant come in. We actually have someone to help give some support to our people in the back. Absolutely. A real professional and um, with a lot of experience and a really nice person. And he's going to be returning on the show regularly. He'll be here on the weekend, Saturday shows. Yeah. So we'll Did, have the help that we may need. No, Swan didn't get kicked. Swan walked. Swan kicked his own ass out the door. Unfortunately, we wish that didn't have happened. But oh boy, oh boy, yes, and yes, we have to celebrate. We finally made seven thousand subscribers yesterday, Mike. How about that? That's finally about time. We've been waiting long enough for that to happen, Thomas. <laughs> That's great. Good news. I know. I know. It's one of those things. It's not. It's more of a. You better believe we finally hit when we're actually at 7,017 subscribers. It took for, forever to get there. But you know what we finally did after we brought up the counter and showed it on the screen. After the show was over, the numbers just start kept on clicking up and clinking up as time was going on. You got to have some fun. You got to have some fun. Yes, Lexapro. My dad was on Lexapro finally near the end of his life. He needed to be on that his entire life. So telefram might work as well. It may help with those upward and downward swings a bit. 
my oh god, I remember my dad after he came off the Lexapro taking the freaking cord of his phone, smashing it on the table until it fell into pieces and went everywhere and slammed it on the floor. Gosh, he was such a wonderful person after he was off his antidepressants. I warned everybody. <laughs> 8,000, here we come. That's right, Paul. That is our new goal, 8,000 subs. It feels like it's so long away, so far away. We just have to get a hearing or something to come forward. I just got to be careful because I'm in uh, um, blackout <laughs> from taking time off work between now and December 19th. So we'll have to figure that one out if we're going to do that one. If we do get a hearing, it pops up. I'll figure out how to make that happen one way or the other. Maybe more Mike talking than me, but we'll still make it happen, right, Mike? Oh, we will absolutely, Thomas. We'll we'll make it happen. We got to seven thousand. Yeah. We'll make it to eight. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Anything new? We got a bunch of people in the back today. Everything's kind of quiet. Everyone's hanging out. Thank you, Wildcat Mahone. Congratulations. You better believe it. And someone said, "Wouldn't it be cool if Larry and Swan hung out together on their own stream?" Absolutely. Oh, that'd be wonderful for him. Uh, and I would support them on that 100%. <laughs> Just not here. Um, Stephen T. Mir, go ahead, my friend. Yeah, um, something interesting that happened when I was coming back. I, I live in an apartment building on the 10th floor. And about two minutes before I even came up in the elevator, all three of the cats were by the door, my girl was telling me, waiting for me. Like, there's got to be some kind of connection. So, you know, that there's no way the animals could have heard me or smelled me. Oh, yet they, 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 know, me. they know when their owner is coming home. They can smell the cat, they can smell the cat food from, from the future. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, I did come home and feed them, but it just amazes me how, like, the, there's so much stuff that we don't know about consciousness. And even the animals are connected, you know. It's just amazing. Oh, yeah, they are. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely connected. Although I'm trying to find a replacement dog here to deal with the loss of Cupcake. I did find a cute one now. Uh, this is a Chihuahua uh, Jack Russell Terrier mix that I just saw pop up on Greg's list here. If I can get a document. There we go. Isn't she cute? Oh, I what a cute so It'd be savage popcorn. How Sav old is the pup? The savage uh, pup. Let's take a look and see. This one is. We have a little, two little puppies left. Two boys and one girl. One white boy, one black boy, one white girl. They've had their shots first visit. Uh, they've been dewormed and probably ready for the next dewormer. Uh, Rehoming fee, whatever you can afford. Thank you. And where are they at? Port Orchard. That is a far distance away. But that is a cute little girl. Not that one. Yeah. That one. You'll That's... find a new animal. I know you will, Thomas. Oh, I know. You know I saw I've got I one. Go I've got my eyes on one that looks just like Cupcake. Like scarily like Cupcake. And Luke is like, Wow. You're <laughs> trying to replace Cupcake. No, you can't do that. Well, we won't call no. it Cupcake. We'll call him Pupcake oh, either yeah. way. Exactly. Wow. Well, I, I know that you'll find an animal and it'll be great. It's good to have a companion like that, you know? Yes. I have the three cats and I love them to death. Yeah, I got you on that one. We've got, yes, I go to desktop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who's that? No, no. Oh, here we go. Yes, chat. I've got Cupcake right here. She's close by and will remain close by. I actually took today um, uh, earlier in this morning and I actually cleaned off my desk. What it is. Except for that. <laughs> yeah. Except for the ashes. That'll always Nobody be can there. actually yep. see. There's nothing off to this side of the desk. I got stuff off to that side of the desk and stuff off in front of it. As long as I have this little part of my desk clean, nobody knows the difference. <laughs> People are asking, but what a, but yeah, but Lazar was the guy telling all those stories and he, about the sports model and everything. But now, wait, anything he said before is now in question unless it's in his new book, right, Mike? Oh, absolutely. He, this is another payday. He always has some angle that he plays. I think it was Bob Bigelow that was talking about at one point during an interview, he actually hired 
Bob Lazar, paid for a laboratory. And he and Lazar took that money and had the laboratory and did no work, zero. And then Lazar just gave him some excuse. And, and at that point, Bigelow had no choice but to terminate his employment. So it goes to show you what his real intentions are, Lazar. Yeah. He makes big promises and follows through with nothing. It's and almost like what Brennan Bigelow. England says here, if only Swan uses his brain for niceless instead of evil, Mike. <laughs> That's a good point, Brendan. Yeah. But listen, you know, everyone has to make their own bed, then they have to lie in it. Yeah. But Bizarre apparently, Sawan. the reason Patrick wasn't around here for a while was because of Sawan. And I have to welcome Patrick back now that the other one's cleared out. No, wait a minute. I didn't know that. I didn't think there was an issue with Patrick and Sawan. Yeah, there was. Patrick. I did not know that, Patrick. Why lose... don't you fill us in on it? I At think least we fill lost me Patrick. in on it. We lost Patrick. Patrick, come back. That's what you said earlier, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, did you know that? I didn't I didn't know that. I found that out earlier to today. Oh, see, then we both were in the dark about that. But I knew there were some things where you know, Swan was saying some things, oh, I don't like you anyway, but that's just Swan being Swan. I was uh, as I would usually say because he doesn't like anybody. That's the problem. Yeah, but Steven. I didn't know that it was blocking Patrick from coming on the show. Yeah. Had he said something to you or me, we would have handled it. Yeah, I and it's also the reason that West wasn't coming around for a while is because of Sawan. I did not know that either. I yes. thought there was other reasons why West wasn't coming on. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but it was kind of obvious, wasn't R -R -R -O -D, it? R-R-O-D-R-O-D-1214. First message I've posted here. It's better Sawan isn't on the show. <laughs> there you go first time long time listener first time poster yeah thomas well, yes i've got a, a our next door neighbors uh had a a um uh chihuahua cross and her, her name was tina she was a cute little thing but um they taught her how to smile. They'd say, smile, Tina, and she'd look like she was growling, you know, like, she'd, yeah, savage little look. Anyway, yeah. Tina used to sit out the front of their yard and smile to the school kids going past. And, of course, the police were called about this savage dog. And when they came and knocked on the door and they opened the door and they said, oh, we're, we're here about your dog. You've got a savage dog, and they said, "Well, we've only got one dog, and here it is." And Tina comes to the front door, and they've looked at it and had a bit of a laugh. Anyway, they said, "Well, we've got to report your dog's growling at people as it walks past." She said, "No," she said that she smiles. The coppers looked at him, of course. Oh, come on, come on yeah. now! And he's gone. No, seriously, look, smile, Tina, because she shows her teeth. Funniest thing, these two coppers walked off, and that was the end of the story. Yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. A lot of interesting feedback coming in from the audience about the situation that happened with Swan. Yeah, well, Swan can go to goof on. Oh my God. I don't think they get along because Swan, you know, Mike, and, and some of the conversations that were out there replying to Swan's reply where he was freaking skunking you, they were saying that both me and you were like Dodie and Lou bootlickers. If there's a Lou bootlicker out there, one of the biggest ones out there is Swan, isn't it? Not that not there's anything wrong with that, because I would be happy to say I'm a Lou bootlicker for that matter. Not that we would lick his boots, but the reality is we support everything he brings forward. Right, my friend? Yes, Thomas, you're absolutely right. And it's not a question of getting down in the gutter like they try to make these stupid points. We are friends and colleagues of Lou and are working with him to bring disclosure out to the public, which is the work he started back in 2017. There's nothing to be ashamed, and I don't take that as uh, an insult. It's actually a compliment the way that I see it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I hear you completely. It's one of those things. We just have to be tolerant, Matt, and not call people out, Matt, because you know how that can go wrong in your particular direction. Hopefully... Everything's going good. I want to welcome up uh, Stephen T. Mir. You have your hand up, my friend. I didn't mean to have my hand up again. I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, I, I just can't wait for you to get a new animal because you definitely have oh. a heart for one, you know. I'll get another one. All right. <laughs> yeah, Thank All right, you very man. much, sir. 
Matt Ramon. Matt, how you doing? You feeling a little bit more inclusive? <laughs> For sure. Hey, I just want to know if there's any studies done about elevation change and losing your mind, because I wonder if that's what happened to Swan. No. He was that way before. <laughs> he he was that way before he went from uh if you want to call it from um Atlanta, the Atlanta area to Colorado, nothing to deal with it. It's just he is who he is, who he is, and we wish him the best at this point. Don't we, Mike? Well, I just want to say to Mike, you know, happy birthday. I was working, so it was a little late for me to, you know, call in or anything like that, but I wanted to say happy belated. And uh, I, I feel bad that you had to have that interaction with uh, Swan on a show like that. Thank you, Matt. But it's not anything that we can't handle. And we've dealt with uh, disruptions on the show before. It doesn't bother me. And uh, the people that make those choices, they uh, learn the hard way and suffer the consequences, which is what happened with this. Uh, thank you for the uh, belated birthday wishes, Matt. I really uh -oh. appreciate it, my friend. Niles Guy wants to know, does this mean Swan, Larry, and Sapphire Elf aren't invited to the New Year's, to the New Year's bash? I'll defer to Mike on that one. Um, well, Swan is permanently banned from returning, so he's off the list. Uh, Larry and Sapphire Elf haven't been heard from in a while. I think they're doing their own thing. Yeah. So I think Sapphire, like you know, Sapphire, Sapphire, like Swan, has bit me many times. Yes, you've given him multiple second chances over and over and over and over again. You know, while he's a moderator over on Spaced Out Radio and Goofon, I think it's best that he ha hangs out in his caravan some are for all in Australia and uh, deals with his own demons for that matter. And I, I think that he probably found the right environment in the shows that he's moderating for right now. Oh yeah. It couldn't, uh, yeah. It's a, I think it's a, it's a wonderful uh, mix. I think that <laughs> that'll go well for everybody involved just like it did for us for a while. But you know, luckily, we don't have to contend with that anymore. Well, Matt Feinberg says, much love to everyone, but I'm glad this show doesn't support that kind of gatekeeping. Thanks, Thomas and Mike. Yeah, you just got to have an open door. You have to have uh Well, we do have an open, open door. Line. No, we have an open door, but our policy also is that if you don't behave and you don't follow the rules and you're distracting and, and insulting or disrespecting the audience or Thomas and myself, then that door that was open will end up hitting you in the ass. It goes both, it swings both ways, that oh, door. Oh, it does. <laughs> right, Thomas? <laughs> oh, it does, it does, it does. It reminds me, I was, someone just brought something up here and I was remi reminded me as I was going through all of my different uh, layouts here today, I was trying to find with the moon logo and stuff and I found one of my old layouts here. I actually did a Larry a while ago. Should we bring it up? Oh, come on. Was this close to Halloween? Why not? I think oh, it's a good this idea. this close to Halloween. We've got to. We've got to bring it out. What am I talking about? Yes. Oh, let me move this out of the way so I can see what I'm doing here. Let's get the desktop document. There you go. Larry is the Quaker Oats guy. Giving us the disclosure <laughs> seal of approval. I just saw with the hair and everything. I was like, oh, my God, it's a Quaker Oats guy. And I had to go ahead. <laughs> Reality check, you like this one? Oh, yeah, that's a good meme. Yeah, you saved that one. Yeah. We'll I pulled that I, out on spe special occasions. Yeah, it is. I guess I should go ahead and put this on Twitter. Quaker disclosure seal of approval. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I don't know if you want to mess with the that you know the lash back, but yeah, it just go good on X. Yeah, I think it's gonna work on X. You naughty Thomas, don't poke the bear. Don't I'm not poke poking the bear. the bear, but it was just like I always saw him as a Quaker. I, I could almost see this kind of point uh, sliding out on the screen as like the spirit of Larry coming in and telling us, Thomas, you gotta talk about Yahweh. He, do, he does look like a Quaker, what you'd think one looked like. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. No, well, maybe more of a Quakerette than a Quaker, but you never know, right, Mike? 
That's right, Thomas. You never yeah. can tell. Never can tell. Uh, take a walk on the wild side, right, my friend? Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. All in the spirit of Halloween. All in the spirit of Halloween. That's right. I guess I could get back to the Halloween with the chat. There we go. I'm back as an alien again. You only get these special times of the year that you actually get to come out and talk about stuff, and you can say, girl, <laughs> go back to Party City where you belong. But, you know, it always has to have a fun time, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but you have to tell the truth. You can't lie because if you lie, people are going to know. Put the uh, the chat comment that at jo uh, and Joanne just made. I think it it, it it's, it's cute. It's My ninety three year old mom laughed too. Is that it? No, guys. I kind of like the show tonight. It is different, but I am glad it's laid back tonight. Let's get into this. Showing up. It, it, we all have our personalities and beliefs, and we have open minds and learning from each other. Very well said, Joanne. And Joanne. Nope, that's not it. I'm looking. I got to turn off the stuff to automatically kick up the stuff on the bottom. Uh, Liliana Chuna. I like Dracula. Holy crap. Last of the finest. Yeah. Go Fast further up. Mama Jama. I'm um, looking for. And... No, further up. Guys, I kind of like the show tonight. It's different. But I'm glad it's laid back tonight. We have our personalities and beliefs, and we have open minds and learning from each other. That's why it's disclosure tonight, late night Sunday. When this show's over, Mike, it's going. It's not going to be in the catalog. You're not going to be able to watch again. So watch it, participate while you're here because it's going to lay away. And this is what we're going to do on every Sunday show. Uh, I love it, and so does the audience. Everyone can let their hair down. Limited, it's a nice format. Limited edition. Yes. <laughs> yes. Having, yes, sir. It's having fun with Fesla night. Yay! Yeah, how about that? <laughs> it's the Sunday fun day episode of Disclosure Tonight. Uh, Fesla uh, fun day. Uh, yes. You like how at least I have the, the fog going over the chat and everything this time to make it look right? Yeah, that's cool, especially for Halloween. Uh, got to get ready for Halloween. Yes, this is my co I've got tons of zombie makeup, and I can make myself look. I've got a really bad infection going, and it's festering and turning nasty. But it just it screws with my skin, and I deal with issues for like months after I do Halloween. So this is just the easiest way to do it. Fake with a filter. Then again, I could go ahead and put on my lizard, my uh, lizard eyes, my serpent eyes. I don't, I don't need makeup. <laughs> I'm just scary. Yeah. Can't go here. I guess I could go here. I guess I could turn into Kim Jong Un. This one actually looks pretty believable, if you ask me. Close. Then again, I remember the days that Mike and I went in prison together, and we were just best of friends. <laughs> oh, back to it again. What is the audience? It kind of feels like being caught in the middle of teenage boys' maturity. Opinion is one thing, but oh, oh, Aubrey, really? You're not having a fun time here tonight, girl? I hope you would. Put this down. Head back up again. Screen capture. Well, where is the ch oh? I don't have the chat here, do I? I don't have the chat. That's why it's not showing up. Not showing up there. Let's go to here. We'll bring up Aubrey McLeod there. There she goes. Grab Aubrey. Let's go chat capture. Let's go to copy. Let's go back to. Here, ah, capture. There you go. Now we've got it here. Yes, it's like teenage boys, but you know, you're cracking up and loving. You know, you can only be serious about not being serious so many times. My cousin actually designs a lot of the masks you see in horror films. Interesting, last of the finest. Does he do with 
Does he get it from Eglin Air Force Base as well? Matt, yes, it's too funny. Surprise, Thomas doesn't have a, a Larry filter. No, I can't do a Larry filter. The closest I can get to a Larry filter is about this one here. Right, right, Mike? Oh, yeah. That's it. Close enough. Yeah, that works. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could wear my, my purple glasses or be a, a devil or... There's the nose. There we go. That's the one that I've been looking for all night long. You got to tell the truth always, because otherwise people know the dis the difference. Yeah, you're doing your Sean Kirkpatrick impression right now with the Pinocchio nose. Yeah, I know. One of those things. But I could always be a kid again. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It's got the. Uh... It's got the little bobble thing, the little bottle going. So it wants to make sure people know that I'm not actually a kid. I'm not a kid. I'm an adult. But it feels good to be young again, doesn't it, Mike? We try. We absolutely try. There's no harm in that. You're only as old as you feel. So. Oh, yeah. As old as, old as, as, old as you look for that. But yeah, we just get that. Well, sometimes. Yeah, I got you. Hey, hey, Hollywood, what's up tonight, my friend? I'm just hanging out, man, while my ceiling's getting painted and stuff, man. It's got to dry, so I'm just hanging out with you guys tonight and wanted to see what was going on. And Are you huffing some fun. paint fumes tonight, Hollywood? You're not sharing. Uh, it's, it's latex paint, man. Oh. It's, it, yeah. How much did it cost you? Uh, to do, do my ceiling so far, I've got probably about 100 bucks into it plus labor. So what's the total cost? Because supplies are usually... Uh, we, we haven't settled yet. My my friend, he's... Uh, I've given him some advance on it and stuff. We're going to see when it's done, what the total bill is. I'm, I'm guessing a couple hundred. There you go. couple hundred for labor and... and a couple supplies. hundred total. Uh, the, the paint I bought and stuff, plus, like I said, a couple hundred for his labor... Oh, there you go. But you wait, wait, you're painting ceilings and the ceilings and walls, right? Yeah, yeah, but he's just he's just working on the ceiling right now. It you see how much I smoke and stuff, man. He had he had to get some uh kills and stuff and put a couple coats on it, man, to kill that nicotine stain, so it's taking longer than I wanted. Yeah. You're... <laughs> I know I'm bad. Uh, a bad man. Right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how to not to get taken to the cleaners next time. Always negotiate up front. Always negotiate up front. It's a good thing, I tell you. Nanya, go ahead, my dear lady. I actually liked um, Larry. I thought he was pretty good. It's just, you know, the way he chucked the patty and left the show was a bit disappointing, but you know, I thought yeah. better of him than that. You know, when he... How do I see it? But I did like him. I'm, I'm going to be honest about this. Rick has a hard time. Rick has a hard time going and literally talking about the phenomena, not just the phenomena, talking about the dark side of what it could be. And if he's going to come out and talk about it, which he already has a hard time talking about the stuff that he can talk about it, don't freaking throw him under a bus. And when he did that and started challenging him and wanting to debate him on it, that's when I stepped in and everything kind of fell apart, just being honest. I was supporting our guest at the time for the conversation that was going on, but it just kind of spiraled. It's a shame, though. As I said, he was a nice guy. He was, um, he was a nice guy. He was, but yeah, I can't to jump in real quick, Susan. I could tell you that he was for most of the time, but for some reason, especially towards the end, he was getting a lot like Sawan. He was cursing and he was being aggressive unnecessarily and attacking people like Sawan has done before. But we don't know why that was or what was going on with him. It doesn't matter at that point because just like Sawan, we can't allow that to continue. We have to stop it. D and we Stu, did. if you want to join, did. really quick, D Stu, if you want to join the show, join it in non-companion mode because it screws up everything I've got going here. 
So join the back if you want to be a part of the conversation. But if you just want to join the back just to watch what's going on, that's not an option, is it? No, it isn't. But I could tell you that Rick just popped into the chat. So we should invite him to come in the back. Rick, come and join us in the back. It's, oh, it's... Leave, Rick, the Rick. leave the poor man alone. It's Sunday night. <laughs> Well, if he could type on the keyboard, he could also talk, which is a lot easier than typing. Come in the pool. It's nice and warm back here. Yeah, Mike just said pee. Mike? <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you to go back to Party City where you belong. Go back to Party yeah. City where you belong. <laughs> Matt, Ramon, you have your hand up, girl. One nice thing, Swan got you a disclaimer that'll always be there. Go back to Party City. Yes, that's true. The, the This disclaimer came to us because of Swan. That's true. That's exactly right. And we had an attorney that specifically worded this to deal with any repercussions coming from Swan. Oh, here he is. Here, here, here's the man of the hour, Mr. Rick Doty just joined us. <laughs> Rick, how the heck are you doing, my friend? Good to see you, Rick. Well, I, I've, I've been listening and watching for a while, but uh, that's kind of laid nice. back show tonight. <laughs> kind of laid back show tonight. That's what it's it about. I like it. That's what it's about. It's about literally late night Sunday, meaning the show's going to be on while the show's going to be on. When it's over, it's getting unlisted. It's getting put back into the catalog. No one else is going to see it. This is our, our ability to talk about anything that's on our mind without having to worry about people going and saying and saying, oh, you said what, where? There's no, there's no. No record of it. No record of it. Yeah. It's kind of like the back chat when we talk privately, but now it's during the live show. So we should yeah. call this the back chat show because there'll yeah. be no record oh, wow. of it. I love it. I love it. I was just sitting here grading, watching you grading some some papers, and uh, I thought, wow, that looks good. Maybe, maybe I'll jump on there. Uh, yeah. So, Having anyways. a great conversation. Great to see you're making your rounds everywhere on uh, the channels. Did Space you have Art a nice Radio. time over on Space Art Radio uh, last night? Yeah, that was fun. That was uh a little bit longer than I thought I'd be on there, but it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Enjoyed those shows it. can go on for a while, can't they? I, I just, I watched yes. it as well, Rick. I saw that you were on there, and I got to tell you, those hosts. Um, hey, Mike, were take a it for a second, can you? Yeah, I got it. Thanks. So I, I was just thinking that the hosts were a little unprofessional compared to your standards. And, you know, they asked you the question, well, she asked you the question about, have you uh, have you been to the moon? I thought that was a, a, a little much. So nice to see you recovered. And um, it was like a little, uh, you know, I guess uh, uncomfortable. It was for me because I didn't expect you to get hit with nonsense like that. But you you handled it very, very well. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm. I'm always prepared for uh, uh, for the worst case scenario. So uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, none of the, uh, the, she wasn't very uh, 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 very good. Uh, 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 she didn't articulate the questions, uh, and uh, it's difficult to answer questions. Well, I also believe she was slightly inebriated. That might have something to do with it as well. Difficult for me to answer all her questions. So well, yeah. Well, when when you have a co-host who's uh, a little inebriated, the it's not going to come out and be articulated correctly. <laughs> so I noticed yeah, that myself. Uh, but you have no control over that, Rick. So you handled it awesome. Did a good, real professional job with that. Thank you. Thank you. I thought that was that was kind of fun. I was invited on a while back and. Uh, I decided to go ahead and jump on and um, while I was, but tonight I thought this uh, show, I didn't get on till, oh, probably 8, 8.20 or my time, about 20 minutes after you've been on, I don't know, about, yeah, about 20 right. minutes after you're on, but yeah, I was too busy right. uh, on the other screen grading uh, midterm, so but listening with one ear. There we go. 
Yeah. It's always good to have it in the background when you're doing other things. Multitasking. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So how are the, how how's your class holding up? Are they getting good? Are they make, good making good, good the grades. cut? Are they making the cut or are there some issues? Well, uh, I have 21 students. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, 400 level class of uh, uh, the first uh, uh, term, uh, uh, first semester is going to be the theory of probability that sets up the uh, next class of combinations and permutations. So um, out of the 21, there's 16 of them that are doing pretty good. And then there's uh, always some that uh, lag behind. There's one particular person probably won't uh, will have to drop it because he just doesn't have the uh, the background uh, you have to have prerequisites and he claims he does and the fact is his uh, uh, his records uh, college records show he did does have uh, the prerequisites but apparently he didn't do very well in them because he He's uh, just lagging behind. Yeah. And, and it may not just be qualifications. It could be personal things within your life. You never know what goes on. People sign up for a class. It goes as extra time. But as things pop up in their life, and sometimes people just don't treat it with the importance that it potentially is because they're there, but they're not necessarily invested in it as far as they need to be. Trust me, I've been in that place. I'm ADD, ADHD, whatever you want to call it. I've got Adderall that I'm off of right now to go ahead and take for this kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. it's just sometimes, it's just the mindset you get into. You, you get, you're just wrapped up in your life and you may not be putting it there. And maybe I guess it's just time to have that talk with an individual maybe and saying, hey, you may want to drop this before it goes permanent on your record. Yeah, that's good advice. I appreciate that, Thomas. And that's what I'm going to do that uh, on Tuesday. I'm going to we're going to have a conference, uh, a one-on-one -on -one conference Tuesday morning. So we'll we'll yeah. talk. I'll talk with him and yeah. see what he wants to do. But uh, he's just thankful. not. You always have to be thankful and understanding of people, and just sometimes if they're going down a path and they can't see where they're at, it's about that gentle tap on the shoulder, give them a hug, and say, "Hey, buddy." I think this is where you need to go right now. Right. Nope. Yeah. So, you know, and if you, if you can't do, uh, you know, one of the important things uh, in this is, is, is calc. You got, you got to know calc one and two. And, um, you know, he has problems with the nonlinear uh, equations, which is in uh, algebra. And um, if you can't get through uh, nonlinear equations, uh, then he's not going to get through the rest of the, the semester. So I think we'll just, uh, I think I'll just, you know, state about what you said to him and, and just tell him, let's, yeah. let's try something else and, uh, uh, and then maybe see you next year or something, but yeah, but he's a senior right now. So, uh, uh there you um, go. We'll, we'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit rough either that, or you need to buckle down and put it all and go all in. Otherwise you're going to end up losing your losing the hand and all the chips that go behind you yeah exactly if i could matt you had exactly. your hand up my friend and i know uh rick roberts really wanted to ask you a question but go ahead first matt uh yeah i just wanted to bring up what we had talked about in the beginning of the show um i want to see what rick has to say about bob lazar's book and what his feelings are with him saying that he's going to release new information and then understanding that you have a book coming out, but your information is stuff that you couldn't say. So it's a completely different scenario, but I just wanted to see what your input is on the guy that had all this stuff and now it's not like believable. Some of the stuff now, and it's just questionable. I just want to see what you thought. Well, I had a long uh, conversation with, uh, his uh, a, a a a representative of the publishing company, uh, a long conversation. Uh, actually, it was so, uh, three different conversations over a period of about a week. Um, and I told them what I thought, and told them what uh, you know what can be proved proven. 
Uh, I don't know anything about well, what he has as far as uh, what he got out of uh, Area 51. But uh, the point that that uh, that he has to conf confront is that the uh, entry control logs shows him there from April of 87 to June, June of 87. That's it. Uh, so uh, if he did all those things in that three month period, okay, well, okay, good. But um, I think he has to answer to that. What capa does it show what capacity he was there yeah. in, such yes, as like a Thomas. janitor? Yes, he did. He was in maintenance. We had this discussion yeah. with Rick earlier. Right. Rick confirmed it. Yeah, in, in, fact, the log. in fact, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Mike knows a, a bit more. Uh, yeah, uh, he, he was he was maintenance, and he didn't have a security clearance for the first. Uh, oh, I don't have it in front of me, but it was first. I, I guess maybe thirty days or twenty days or something. He didn't have a security clearance. He had to be escorted everywhere he went. So, and again, I wasn't there during that time period. So all I can say is what the log said. So I, 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 I can't say anything else. So all you're speaking from is the evidence that you have available to you today, Rick. And that evidence of what's being shown basically goes ahead and shows that what role he was there when he was, well, coming into, uh, what facility was he coming into again? I think he was in, um, supposedly S2, uh, but the uh, entry control log doesn't show him in S2. It shows him with uh, uh, EG&G, uh, uh, contract employee with EG&G. Right. Isn't EG&G someone who's coming from the DOE? Yeah, it's a contractor for DOE. Right. <laughs> the DOE. Uh, uh, uh. We, right. we look at them so many times and we just have to look at a lot of the stuff that's going on and say the DOE is where it's at. The DOE has is, is been one of the main culpable, if you want to call it, organizations right. that have been part of this cover up. Bob might Title, have been there. Yeah. Title 18 is what they've been hiding under the whole time. Right, Rick? Right. Not exactly. Title 10, not Title 50, Title 18. Is what shut that down. Bob might have been there see. longer. Hey, Chris, I mean, make sure you raise your hand first before you start oh, talking. Me. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. We'll get to you in a second. Mike? Yeah. So it's Title 18, Rick, under the Department of Energy, which is how they've been keeping the legacy program under wraps for as long as they have. I was curious. What are your thoughts about the memo that we were talking about the other day? Are they really going to be able to get away with keeping the entire Congress in the dark moving forward at this point, in your opinion? I don't think so. Uh, our group is going to have a uh, conference uh, chat on um, Tuesday afternoon, so uh, I'll, I'll know a lot more then, and I can certainly come on your show Tuesday night and tell you what we learned, um, but uh, I don't. I don't think so. I, I think there's a lot of limitations on what they can do. Uh, we, the Congress, still has oversight authority, and uh, they have to. They, they have to be able to um, have access to information that they have uh, oversight authority on. So uh, I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of legal questions there. So we should dive into it. Yeah, and please, as soon as you hear something, keep us posted and uh, let us know. You can come back on on Tuesday. It would be great. Yeah. And Thomas, uh, Rick Roberts has a question for Rick, so let him answer next. Well, yes, I was I was waiting for you to finish, Mike. Rick I am finished Roberts. now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Rick, I'm Thank practicing. You. I'm practicing for Halloween. -y. What can I say? But Rick Roberts, go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, Matt kind of hit it. I, I wanted to get Rick's Doty opinion because, like, Rick's like prime time. It seems like when Lazar was coming up, that's you know, when when you hear the stories like back in the '80s when everyone just started coming out and stuff like that. And I wanted to get Rick's opinion on Lazar, which he kind of touched on. And the origin story, Lazar, I think, has some stuff that he's hit on, like Area 51 and being able to point out the UFOs at night, knowing the times when they're flying. So I think there's some truth to his story. Now, if he's the real, I wonder if there's someone else that maybe clued Lazar in, that maybe Knapp found someone else that actually was the person that was in Area 51, and Lazar was just a face man. And 
I wonder if that's part of it, but I was also wondering, um, like Gene Huff, he just disappeared. Has anyone looked into Gene Huff? Why did he disappear? Who is you know? Gene Huff? So if you remember the origin story of how Bob Lazar met George Knapp, it was like he was uh, at John Lear's house and they were doing a, uh, for a mortgage and he was helping Gene Huff measure John Lear's house. And and Bob met uh, John Lear and was telling John Lear that you know he didn't believe in UFOs and blah blah, and so supposedly they became friends. And then uh, Bob Lazar started working on Area 51, and and then you know he started becoming friends with John Lear, and that's when the whole story kind of like blew up in George Knapp. So there's like a whole little circle that connects John Lear, George Knapp, Bob Lazar, that are all tied together. And Gene Huff was also part of that wheel. And he was Bob Lazar's friend that introduced him to John Lear and all that. And this Gene guy just disappeared. I don't know if I want to look for him or anything, because he was really into it as well. Or did they all conspire together? It, and even like Goodall. Goodall was friends with them. They're all from the Vegas area. So And George Knapp was friends with, with Goodall. So did George Knapp, you know, make, come up with a story? And, and that's how he got his career off, by using Lazar's face? That's another thing, too. I mean, there's some truth, I think, to Lazar's story, but there's some that we know that doesn't add up. Has anyone put all those pieces together or thought about that? Well, you bring up an excellent point. Uh, there's a, uh, <laughs> it's a uh, Pandora's box when you look into that because, yeah, there's uh, Gene Huff, uh, um, John Lear. Uh, there's a guy that we only know his first name by as Corky. Uh, Corky, I I personally feel, uh, not just me, but many others, feel that uh, um, uh, he's getting uh, information from Corky. Corky, uh, I think, is a legitimate, was a legitimate scientist working inside uh, one of the research centers on Area 51. And, um, and Lazar made friends with him, not at Area 51, but in Vegas, um, and there's another long story about, and and I, I'm not going to go into it because I don't know factually if if the chain of events or the chronological order of how Corky and uh, Lazar got to, uh, hooked up. But anyways, um, the, the, anyways, J J uh, Lazar met this guy by the name of Corky, and there's a lot of people out there probably know who he is. I know George Nori knows him. Uh, and, and actually interviewed him online uh, a long time ago uh, without uh, naming him other than Corky. Uh, Corky is a, a scientist because he, I think there's people that have vouched for him. And I think most of the information Lazar, Lazar is talking about and, and the fact that he knew when things were flying around or outside, he's standing outside watching things flying around the Nellis Tesla training area came from this Corky guy. Now, um, Gene Huff, he's another guy that um, he's 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 still around. Uh, I can guarantee you, he's still around. Uh, he's not <clears throat> so much involved in Area Fifty One, the UFO uh, 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 phenomena anymore. Uh, he ha he has other dealings, and he has some trouble that he got into in real estate uh, uh, investments and so forth. But. Um, yeah, you get you, you got a lot of that right, uh, Rick. Uh, that he, that Lazar probably got it from somebody else, and and I could, uh, I can almost guarantee it's coming from this Corky guy. But we don't really know. Uh, I don't know who he is, but there's other people out there that claim that he's somebody, a scientist that, that worked for EGG on uh, uh, inside uh, Area 51. Thank you. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Welcome. Absolutely. Chris Aiken, you ever hand up that yeah, um, Okay. I mean, Bob could have worked there a lot longer than just from April to June of 1987. I mean, you have but, to remember. But if he did, hey, he would have been he, on the, the rosters of people signing in. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff that was missing from him working at Los Alamos and then Area 51 also, just people erasing a lot of his... Uh, you know, stuff saying that he was there, he worked there, and all that kind of stuff. So you got to keep that in mind. Also, the other thing I want to know about is, well, it's not a question, it's just I want to say that 
Bob has gone on record saying that, you know, he really doesn't like doing interviews because, you know, he's pretty much told the same story over and over, and he said he doesn't have anything new to add. So why is he doing a book with something new to add? Because there's advances with the book. And because he's claiming that he has to change his story now and new information is going to come out because the previous information was not correct. At least when Rick was on Spaced Out Radio last night, that's what the co-host was mentioning about James Goodall writing the new book. You remember that, Rick, at the end of the show? Yeah. Before you left? Yes, yes, yes. I remember so what that. are, you, what are and, your uh, thoughts on that, Rick, about, Rick, about uh, Lazar changing his story now with James Goodall? Well, there's a lot of information out there that uh, that Lazar has has, has uh, volunteered from ni from 1989 on. Uh, if you followed him, uh, a lot of people have. Uh, I haven't because I I ch checked him out before, and I knew some people that uh, uh, that that ha actually had worked with him, but for a very short period of time. Now, the entry control log that we obtained it runs from uh, uh january 1st 1979 to uh december 31st 1990 every single person that had access to the nellis test and training range with exception of tonopal air force base is listed in there uh and it goes over it's a huge massive book uh, with dot matrix, the old dot matrix print uh, log, and so it's almost impossible to copy it. Uh, but we did find, uh, and, and one of the first things we had to do when we, we obtained that log was verify it. We had to verify that it was, in fact, a really a real log came in, came from there. We, we submitted FOIA requests. We uh, went through there and checked people that we knew worked out there, such the first thing I did was check myself. And I worked out there, and I during that time frame, and my time frame was exact the two times that I was out there. So I know, okay, this is a legitimate. And all the other people I knew worked out there, uh, and who had access and worked out there. There's contractors, there's military personnel, uh, and even civilians. Now, one of the things that w surprised us, and we figured out later why, Art Bell. Uh, in 1984, had access to Area 51. And so we had to dig deep, uh, because when we got it, Art was, of course, dead. Uh, we had to dig deep to find out why Art Bell would have access to Area 51. And lo and behold, Art Bell set up a radio station. Uh, I think it was 996, something like that, AM 996, out there for the base. Now, Art didn't have a security clearance. He didn't have unescorted privileges. He had es escorted privileges. He was out there for uh, a total of four months in, in 1984. And he, uh, he and we found, of course, found this all out later. He set up a radio station for him out there. So that's why our bell had access out there. And there's a lot of people that had uh, temporary access, limited access, all sorts of different types of access. But if if uh, Bob Lazar had it, had access for more than the, from April, or actually it was March 28th <clears throat> to June 20th or something to that effect, um, he would have, if he had access longer than that, he would have been in there for, uh, uh, in a certain category, and he wasn't. I mean, that's the only... Uh, the only thing that we could see in on that. Now, could somebody have gone through there and manipulate that? No, absolutely not. Not so, considering what that log was in 19 era, 1990, or 1970, 80 era computer printout. So what you're saying is, Rick, while he could have had access to some things, the logs that were there from the dot matrix printers showing people who came in and left, the proof isn't there within the logs that we have today. Right. At least not in that log. Now, right. if he could sit down, and we tried to do this. I tried to do this with him. Um, I tried to ask him. Now, here's another problem he has. Uh, he's talking about S4. He talks about S4. I worked at S4. I, well, I tell you what, all of us has been there. Well, at least to to where S4 is at. I was never an S4, but it was S, 
S2, and the only way to get to S4 is through S2. Uh, S4, uh, S4 is under S2, so anybody that had access, access would say, yeah, I, I worked in the S2 complex, because S4 was underground. So, and he doesn't say that. He says, oh, I work at S4. So every single person I I, I know and that they're still alive, that's still, uh, some of them within our working group, that's still out there, will say, that's the, that's the red herring. That's the red herring. Is say, he's saying S4, and he should be saying S2. And um, so uh, that's a, a question that I confronted him with many times, and he, and he skirts the issue. He said, well, S4 is where I worked. I said, how did you get to S4? He goes, well, I went through uh, doors, and I said, you know what, Bob? You ha the, if you were at S2, you know exactly the entry control procedures, exactly how you would go through the S2 complex, the gates, the interior uh, internal gates, and where the elevators were to go down to S4. Like I said, I was never at S4. I, would, I was at S2, which is the administrative control uh, area for everything underground, under Papoose which is uh, S3 uh, S and S4, and I think even S, there's an S5. Uh, but I was never down there. I was only at S2. Uh, but Bob couldn't explain that to, to us. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Let me make a quick point, Rick. Um, he had to come through gate 500, the main gate. And he was claiming that he was going to S4, and as you just pointed out, uh, you have to go through S2 to get to S4, but he never once mentioned that in all the times that he recalled the story. The next thing is the control logs that you have are authentic to the degree that didn't you mention that the Department of Defense is requesting and you've submitted those control logs to them because they don't have the actual logs themselves anymore and they authenticated the logs that you're in possession of? Exactly. That log right now is in the hands of the Department of Defense IG's office. They're, they're looking through that, and that's one, one method they're using to verify and, and vet the people who claim to be whistleblowers, and it worked out there at Area 51, at least during that time period. Now, there are, of course, other logs uh, before and after, which we didn't have access to, but the, for that 10-year period, that log is is the only one that the DOD IG has, and they're using it. We gave it to them to use uh, to, to verify people's employment. Uh, and even now, um, there's some other. Uh, now, here's here's a, here's another uh, uh, thing that Bob Lazar has has said, uh, not so much in public, but privately to uh, uh, Jeremy and to George Knapp. Before he was cleared to to work in Area 51, he worked at um, the Nellis Air Force Base, the research complex there. There is a research complex at, at, at Nellis. In fact, you could uh, anybody could get a visitor's badge to get on uh, Nellis Air Force Base, and you could drive up to. You can't get into that area, but you could drive up and and know that it exists. So uh, I, I th and so he's claiming, oh, before I could get out to Area 51, uh, I worked there at Nellis, and I worked there for a number of, 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 uh, of, of months, I guess. And, and that's where he, he claimed he met, um, um, uh, what's his name, Edward, uh, oh, the, 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 the father of the hydrogen bomb. Edward Teller. Uh, Edward Teller. Te Teller, Edward Teller, yeah. where he, he, he worked with Ed, Edward Teller. As last um, and finest brings up really quick, didn't Lazar say they told employees not to look around? Is it possible they didn't know what section he was in the facility? That's true, but there's only one place they can come and sign in for, right, Rick? To get in. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's a complex system. Uh, when I worked out there, uh, it was a very complex system to get in, to actually get in. If you flew in on a Janet flight, 
you had to go through the same procedure as if it, as if you if you drove through a gate uh, the three five or eight hundred or, or or whatever gate you 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 actually drive into, and then you can't drive onto uh, through the Nellis Test and Training Range unless you have uh, a certain type of pass. You have to have uh, permission from the commander of the Nellis Test and Training Range to drive a vehicle on. And then, of course, the vehicle has to be inspected and, and so forth. Uh, but there's bus service uh, at certain locations at uh, Alamo, uh, at Warm Springs, at Tonopah, the town of Tonopah, um, Beatty, and <laughs> Vegas, where you can take buses out to, uh, to, 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 to the site. And then, of course, when you get in, security gets on board the bus. There's certain procedures you got to go through. Uh, that to verify that you are who you uh, the, the your badge says you are, and then when you get down there, that doesn't give you a right to go to any particular area or every area. You only can have access to the area that you have that your badge is color coded, uh, it's, and it's called an exchange badge system, uh, meaning that when you go to when Lazar goes to uh, S two, he walks through. He has a badge. It's it. The bat badge is green in color. He gives that badge to security people, and they take that and match that with a red badge, and they give him his red badge. That's what's called an exchange badge system. And then he wears that while he's working, and uh, everybody that would have access to a certain area. And that's how it worked. Yeah, absolutely. If I could, Brian, you've had her hand up for a while, my friend. <laughs> You know, Nick, you're you're like I, fourth in line. Brian's first, and then Nick. Matt and Glenn, and then Nick. Brian, go ahead. I was actually I was going to change the subject, and I don't want to. So, Nick, why don't you go ahead of me and ask your question, Nick? I don't know about uh, the crack and roll program, Eric. I guess not. Say it again, Nick. I, you, I, I didn't very hear. low. Crack and roll program. Did Edward Teller know? Edward Teller know? What about Edward? Did Teller? Edward Teller know? I I don't yes. I don't know anything yes. about Edward. I don't know anything about Edward Teller. I met him one time at the uh, Doctor Putoff's lab, but I I don't know what he knew and what he didn't know. Um, I knew he had access uh, to uh, uh, the facilities out there, but I, I don't know what he knew and what he didn't know. Now, if I may, Rick, I'd like to ask you one question. I appreciate you coming on. Um, we are all talking about Title 10, Title 18, Title 50, et cetera, et cetera. And I got to thinking last night, has anybody talked about the Constitution? That trumps everything. Has anybody that in your group or anybody talked to a constitutional lawyer um, is there any way that we can press on that? There are, I mean, there's there's things in there that I think that are pretty impressive. It's a long play um, um, many years out, but I think that, I mean, the way that I'm looking at it, that's probably a good way to go. And or if things ever got serious, we'll just close your, a, a convention of states, which has never happened, but that is enshrined in the constitution as well. Um, Anyway, so that's just my question, if you've ever broached that topic or heard about it. Well, yes, uh, but there's there's a legal uh, hurdles. You, ca you can't enforce, uh, many years ago, um, in, in, when, when a law is passed, um, it has to be uh, ratified and uh, uh, has to be published, and there's all sorts of, under Title I, it gives you the administrative uh, procedures for creating a law, and those that law is based on uh, whatever the Congress has passed. But when you when we're, we, uh, the United States of America, isn't a constitutional uh, republic or, or democracy, we don't we don't live, uh, we, we, we claim we do, but we actually don't. The governance of the, the laws of the United States is enacted by our legislative branch with uh, uh, signature from our executive branch 
and that's the law. So if you want to say that, you know, under uh, Article 1, Clause 2, Section 1 of the Constitution says that, well, yeah, it does say that, but it, it doesn't mean that, that, that we could use that in the, in, the, in the sense of a law. I mean, you have to have a law that's written. Uh, and, and a good a constitutional lawyer, if I may, may uh, may be able to make a good case on some of this stuff, but it takes a lot of time and money. I I I understand that, but I, you know, for example, for the common defense, I mean, you could make arguments there on both sides. Um, anyways, I was just thinking about that last night. I was just curious, um, but I do want to bring up one other point. I'm wearing my Titan missile shirt. Um, this is this is the uh, docent shirt for the Titan Missile Museums, and down here where I'm at, we had 18 of them, and there are 54 Titan missile sites around the U.S. Uh, so uh, you've probably been in one or two, but yeah. Yes, I, I was actually I I was uh, down at Tucson at uh, at the Titan base at. Uh, uh, I can never remember the base, David, Davis Mountain. Yeah, Davis Mountain. Yeah, yeah. And also, I was at uh, uh, a Titan base in uh, Little Rock. They had one in Little Rock too. Uh, I mean, as a museum, I, I was never at the at any of the bases when they actually had the missiles there. Uh, quite a complex, quite a tour. Uh, it it, it uh, really something for those guys to live the way they lived and uh, having that. Uh, all those uh, that, and the Titan uh, two carried the largest nuclear weapon that we had. Then the, uh, the uh, I think it was a nine, nine megaton. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, but getting back to your question again, <clears throat> the um, uh, the Constitutional Convention would be a way to go if we could get thirty eight states. Uh, to come together and 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 uh, create um, amendments to the Constitution that could answer every one of these questions that we have and every one of these problems we have dealing with disclosure, uh, that would be the best 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 thing to go because under the under the Constitution, uh, 38 states or or two thirds of the states could get together uh, and draft uh, amendments and ratify them in that constitution convention it's occurred twice in history and um they've they, and, and and we could do that and and the president can't stop it or congress can't stop it it's the right. states that control it and right. that's one of the one of the things that the uh, one of the, the finding I fathers say, Rick, if i can that danny sheehan brought up that we have a constitutional issue that's going on that he had said he, about over a year ago here on disclosure tonight that he and a bunch of attorneys were willing to go ahead and challenge this, but that challenge from him has kind of fallen off to the wayside because he has this new nonprofit group that's there that's working with the government. Does it seem like he's been bought out potentially, or there may be a reason why he's not bringing, you know, that lawsuit against the federal government for their lack of transparency? Uh <clears throat> I haven't spoken with Danny in a while, but uh, uh, the people that have, uh, they know he's 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 the right guy to 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 answer a lot of questions. But he isn't necessarily a the the, the um, uh, I should say the his expertise is in other areas. Uh, there are uh, we have uh, six uh, lawyers uh, in the advanced working group, and they're all. Every one of them, every every one of them were. Uh, well, we had actually, I should say, we have two judges, former judges, one uh, former uh, federal judge and one uh, former uh, court of appeals for the uh, state of uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, judge retired, uh, and you know they could answer almost any question about this subject. And but there are some that are uh, questionable. What 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 can be done? And I think Danny brought up a few good points. Uh, like right now, the Schumer Amendment. Um, you know that the House passed the National Defense Authorization Act, and the Senate did. Now it's in reconciliation. It's it's going through reconciliation, and it hasn't been in reconciliation uh, since August. 
And so uh, their meeting, uh, I think, I don't know how many people know it except for us. Uh, one of the Senate aides told us their meeting this week uh, before they go on their uh But doesn't uh, reconciliation happen after the Senate passes their version of the bill and the House passes their version of the bill? Right now, we haven't had anyone in the House even bring up this part of the bill to go ahead and pass. No, but if you look at it, it if you actually look at what is occurring uh, and it's it, it, that they're, they're, the House passed theirs, the Senate passed theirs, the Senate has uh, the Senate has included in their bill the Schumer Amendment. But when they went to reconciliation, they suspended the Schumer Amendment. It's not in either one right now. So what they have to do is they have to reconcile it. Now, and what happens is if they bring that back, if they and they're going to water it down, I guarantee you they're going to water it down. But if they do bring it back, because it's really bipartisan, uh, with some exceptions, but they have to satisfy the executive branch, or they're going to veto it. So, that, so they have to satisfy it, and I think they they will. It's going to be a watered down version, but they're going to do it. Uh, but once they do that, then the, the the bill has to go back to both the House and Senate to be passed. Uh, uh, and will the Senate get enough votes? I don't know. Uh, I think the House will. I don't know about the Senate. Uh, that's up in the air. But that's the situation right now, as as I know it. Yeah. Well, well, I'd like to add one point to uh, Brian's original constitutional question. Um, the way that I see it, and Rick, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but the judicial branch, meaning the Supreme Court, uh, their job is to interpret the the Constitution and the laws of the land and make a decision on that. The one exception to that, however, is the National Security Act that was passed in 1947. <clears throat> because of that act, if there is a legal issue in regards to national security, like we're talking about now, the Supreme Court will not rule on it. They, not because they can't, but because they choose not to. And it's an issue that supersedes and trumps the laws of the land, including, I believe, the Constitution, and prevents them from ruling against it, which is how the government has maintained this amount of secrecy for this amount of time. Uh, what do you think about that, Rick? Am I right or wrong? No, you're right. You're right. You know, And, and there are some things... Uh, believe it or not, that the uh, Supreme Court can't uh, uh, can't uh, rule on, and there, there are some things there. And as you notice, if you follow the Supreme Court, which I do, I just read every day to see what you know. They refused uh, to take this case, or they let stand something from a lower court, uh, and, and things like that. So, uh, that, but what the what the Supreme Court does, and and any court. Uh, they compare the law with the Constitution, and they determine whether the law that passed by Congress is constitutional based on the Constitution. And and so, uh, you know, we got right now, I think the Supreme Court is looking at 20 cases uh, on the uh, Second Amendment uh, uh, right now. And and there's a. Uh, uh, I think some uh, First Amendment uh, cases that are coming before him in this term, uh, primarily because of the riots that occurred after the Rodney King case. Uh, and so, uh, the, you know, they're going to be hearing some cases that's going to be controversial uh, during this uh, session. I agree. And thank you for that, Rick. And Brian, I, I think those points that I made probably address the question that you answered in gives you an explanation as to why we are where we are. Right, Brian? Yeah, now Glenn's had his hand up, so uh, forgive me. Yeah, Glenn, we'll get there in one it. second. I have to go ahead and go ahead and thank a bunch of people for the Super Chats. Holy cow. That came in when I wasn't paying attention. Faisal saying, fun day, Sunday. Another one coming in from Brendan England saying, uh, Thomas, will $10 Australian get me a bottle of Avi Lube? Hopefully it will. Another one coming on Facebook saying another Sunday fun day. Thank you very much, Will. You're in the back. Also want to thank Rick Roberts says someone needs to find Gene Huff. 
he went MIA when Lazar was getting popular. Why? Uh, good old is part of the LV um, Lear group. Any thoughts on that, Rick? Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, I know, I know, uh, I, in fact, I uh, occasionally get emails from Gene. Um, uh, he's on my uh, email stream, and uh, he's on uh, Jack Sarfetti's, and he's on a number of others. So I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll, I'll send him an email and see if we can uh, see what he's up to right now. But he's in, he's involved in some other things that has nothing to do with this subject. Uh, he's a... Uh, um, he's really into the uh, wild horses, protection of wild horses in the state of Nevada and Utah. Uh, he's he's has a fund. He funded uh, uh, almost a million dollars, I think, the last time I checked for the protection of of, of these wild horses. He's, wow. He does things like that. That's crazy. Uh, quick question coming in from Hypnotoad in the chat. Happy Halloween! I just got in. I was curious if Rick had any updates on the Vegas UFO. <laughs> That case brings me joy hearing about it. Any thoughts from you, Rick? Have you heard anything more on that? No, I I, I get a I, there's a there's a good friend of mine who's retired, um, um, federal uh, federal agent who lives in Vegas, and he keeps me updated on that. But uh, as of uh, you know a few weeks ago, the, this family is uh, went into hiding. They're not. Uh, uh, not talking to anybody. I think they were being they were paid off uh, for a movie history channel. <clears throat> Actually, gave him five thousand dollars for a show or a movie or something or another. So, uh, but I haven't heard any any more than what has been. Uh, what, it's what I've always said the money, isn't it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Glenn, you have your head, you've had your hand up for a while, my friend. Yeah, I have. Sorry, I'm going to bring the conversation back to where I have a hand up. But sorry, Rick. Um, I don't know if it was discussed earlier. I've only just come back from work, but um, did you guys know, or have you talked about it before, that Lazar or some people were making up a movie for Lazar? Making a movie? movie? Yeah, they're making a movie about him, and they're yeah. and they're and they're doing it um, exactly to his specifications. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know, one you, of the things about that. Sorry, sorry, Rick, you'll be able to you'll be able to discount it straight away as soon as you see it. A Lazar <laughs> movie, really? No, we're, I know we're already talking about it. I know. Thomas, that's disgusting. I, <laughs> I'm just, like I'm just being things. honest. A Lazar movie, really? So we're going to get the truth this time? What about all the other truth he's been telling us for all these years? Glenn? What, what did you say? No, I'm just bringing it up. So, anyway. Did you say it's going to be a stand up philosopher movie, Thomas? Well, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if Rick knew about it and um, what Rick was going to say. No, I knew about the movie, but, but I don't, uh, you know, I. But one thing about Bob Lazar is he sticks to uh, what he said <laughs> before. And uh, <laughs> so he, uh, you know, he, he wants to believe in what he t tells people. So, uh, well, you know, there's not much anybody can do about that. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it'll be a heck. <laughs> It'll be heavily criticized once it comes out. I love your face, Rick. Perfect. Thank you. you Welcome pretty, to you Halloween. Pretty, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> we are just I like two this one days <laughs> away. <laughs> I don't have to wear a mask. I just have my face normal. Well, that's okay. But serious. Got to have fun with it. Matt Ramon, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, so we know that... Uh, Bob Lazar doesn't have a Marilyn Monroe tunnel to Area 51 where no. he was getting snuck in and out of. And if Bob Lazar is not coming forward as a, uh, a whistleblower, if he was to, would he even get through the vetting process because of all the stuff that Rick just explained? No, he wouldn't. I don't think he would pass through the... Uh vetting process you know and and he was asked that question uh, not, not long ago on a youtube on a podcast uh i i think it was a uh what do you call them when uh, they do a thing on uh, twitter it's a 
uh, whatever that that it was a, a group. Yeah, tw- uh, yeah. There we go. Twitter space. Um, he was asked that question, um, and uh, he couldn't answer it. Um, so, <laughs> uh, he, they asked him, "Why aren't you a whistleblower?" And he said, "Well, they haven't invited me. Number one." And I don't know that I would want to go through that, something to that effect. So, sorry to bring it back to that. No worries, my All friend. Right. Rick Roberts, your hand is on my friend. Your hand is on. Rick. Now, Oop, can Rick you hear me? Dodie, yep. Rick Roberts. All right. Uh, regardless of what you think of Bob Lazar, either think it's bull crap or you think it's telling the truth, it's a great campfire story. I think we can all agree upon that. Um, you know, if there's a sliver of truth or not in there, or whatever. But it brings people to this topic. I mean, people watch that movie and then they find out, okay, well, they, there's more to this. There is, you know, so you got to appreciate it for that aspect of it. Even if he's a t- if we find out years from now that he was the biggest bullshit artist. But the other thing I was going to say too is uh, just to change the subject a little bit. Are there any thoughts on who could be Kirkpatrick's handlers that they're talking about? And I kind of wondering if it's people that that commonly come up like Hal Putoff. I mean, is he a handler? Oh, no, Kirk it's Patrick? not Hal Putoff. We're talking about people like Ronald Moultrie, people inside the DOD who are trying to keep the truth from coming out, not people who are there who are trying to keep the who are trying to bring forward the truth. That's the difference, right, Rick? Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, uh, I guarantee you, it's not Hal. Uh, it's, uh, and we have been, uh, in fact, uh, recently, I think uh, last Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, somebody, people from another group accused us of being uh, uh, on the side with Sean Creek Factory. And I can guarantee you that, uh, that we're not. Oh, my God. Who was, who was actually going out, uh, God, saying you were a, a Kirkpatrick collaborator. That is like the biggest insult that anybody could have. Yeah, that's a, another group involving, uh, I think, mostly uh, academia. Oh, my God, Mike. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I can tell you what my thoughts are to address this, this question that was just asked. Look at Ronald Moultrie. He was heavily involved with Raytheon, which is a private yep. company. And he, right. It, right. So if you want to dig deep into who could potentially be on that security, that secret uh, advisory council that Kirkpatrick is running and deciding policy for Arrow, I think you should look in that direction because it, it goes right up the, the, the chain of command, in my opinion. Do you think they'll be exposed soon? Like, I think it's coming down to is there something going on with Kirkpatrick where. Or it leaked out that he does have this, this panel that he reports to. So you think it's, the names are going to come out very soon? We're working on it. We'll keep you posted. Something to break well, on this. You got, you got Frank, uh, Frank Kendall, the Secretary of the Air Force, who used to work for Raytheon. Right. Uh, you got Christian Jones, who you, you used to work for a uh, contractor. You have the, the Deputy Chief Scientist, Victoria Coleman, who worked for uh, DARPA. She was the head of DARPA. Uh, these people are all in government right now. And I wouldn't, uh, uh, I dare say that probably any one of these people are the ones that are controlling uh, the puppet strings of, of Sean Kirkpatrick. And Arrow, and that secret advisor. And Arrow. Council. Yeah. So if exactly. they change seats, let's say they put Lou, Lou Elizondo in charge of I've heard like they're talking about putting Lou Elizondo where Kirkpatrick is. Well, Lou Which Elizondo is- had the opportunity to go ahead and take the role of where Sean Kirkpatrick could be. But if they gave him that role, you know what that would have done? That would have shut him up. It would have muzzled Lou Elizondo. And that was the last thing he wanted to take that opportunity to go ahead and take. Because, yes, it would have been a job. It would have been for a period of time. But the reality was, although he had the opportunity ahead of Sean Kirkpatrick, that would have muzzled him effectively from lobbying Congress, lobbying other people to go ahead and bring the truth out. So, you know, so regardless it, of Kirkpatrick or whoever takes that role, they're going to be silenced. And basically, don't, yeah, don't trust nothing. <laughs> they'll they'll be working for the DOD again and uh, muzzled by the the reality of the DOD, but. We've seen how muzzled Kirkpatrick has been 
with the DOD, especially when he had his paper that came out with Avi Loeb earlier this year, where he talked about Umama Mama coming flying in with a, within our solar system and dropping off drones that would parachute into our planet, which is just such a joke, comparatively speaking, to the reality of what we know, what these craft have the capabilities of. How would they lower it down to such a low capability? You know what I mean, Glenn? Hey, look, I totally understand you. I, 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 I do hold Avi Loeb's credentials quite high, though. I mean, yeah, maybe it is a narrative they're pushing from behind, and I'm totally behind you, Thomas. But I just wanted to say one thing, that um, congratulations for... <laughs> You do that on me all the time. Because you're talking about Ivy Loeb and you're giving him props. I have, to, I get, have to put the shit face get on and saying, oh, my God. You could, you could probably get Loeb less than 10 bucks for free down the back streets of um, Vancouver or something. But, um, <laughs> hey, um, I just want to congratulate on the 7K subscriptions because Thank I'll you be very working much, hard. Sir. Thank and, you very much. We're going to try and get my friends over. We to worked hard to get to 7,000. You know, you know what helped? was actually going ahead and showing the counter on the screen to show people how close we were at and it actually helped people go ahead and hit that subscribe button to help us yep. get to that point but also um you got 101 um likes now from one for me anyway um i think it's a great thing we got to get past that dickhead goof on now yeah. or we're way past for the longest time my friend absolutely Mike, what's up? Well, Thomas, I think it's clear at this point that with the job Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick has been doing with Arrow, and has been against the public's wishes on this subject, whoever they get to replace him at one point, and make no mistake about it, at one point they most certainly will. Yeah. I think whoever that will be will be in much better hands with them running Arrow than Kirkpatrick right now is. That's what I think. Yeah. Hopefully we're not going to have to wait so long for disclosure kicks in. We're so freaking old. <laughs> can I can I just say one thing? Uh, yes, take it, Rick. Uh, uh, Please, uh, Rick. Per pertaining to... Um, uh, it's off the subject and somewhat. Um, um, I'm here. I'm, I'm not as so, so, I used to be, but I'm listening. <laughs> So, um, a certain person submitted a FOIA request um, some time ago. Actually, it was over a year ago uh, through DIA for anything on Serpil, the Serpil story. And one of the interesting things that this guy got back was uh, a, 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 a short letter saying, are you talking about Serpil? And then the explanation next to it, um, Serpil meaning secret extraterrestrial remote planet operation. And uh, the, the letter actually asked the, the person who submitted the FOIA request, is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about something else? Um, and he just got this not long ago. Uh, he submitted it over a year ago and, you know, because of COVID and things. And, and he thought that was quite interesting because I've heard this once before a long time ago that Serpil actually meant that secret extraterrestrial remote planet operations now what does dia claim that to be they did they didn't explain but i just thought that was interesting and i just wanted to throw that out there it is interesting i agree rick but i can tell you that they didn't answer the request they instead asked the question which is another <laughs> tactic that they use so it doesn't surprise me <laughs> Now he'll have to wait another year for a response. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. That's what they do. That's how it works with them. So, yeah. yeah, it's interesting. But as far as that's concerned, there's been a lot of people over the years that have looked very deep and hard on it and have debunked it to a large degree. So I'd, I'd be more interested to see if they offered a response if it was something other than what's commonly known in regards to the Serpo story. That itself might be actually more interesting, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Thomas. Uh, yeah, I do. Tony I do has too. his hand up. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's okay, Rick. Continue with that. Oh, I, I do too because if if you tried to figure out what that meant, secret extraterrestrial remote planet operations, uh, that that would that would do, uh, uh, generate a hundred different questions from people saying, "Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, what does that mean? I mean, is that really? It's not the name of the planet, but is it a DIA operation that we are exchanging people?" with other planets because that could that that's what it could mean secret extraterrestrial remote planet operations and and, and to me that might mean that we are exchanging uh, we do have an exchange program well look at Oppenheim it's, it's the most perfect pl- most perfect country to hide uh, secrets eh? yeah i agree thomas uh, tony has his hands up after that question yes. Tony, go ahead, my friend. I guess on the Serpo stuff, hey, Rick, have you um, heard much people being sheep-dipped? Um, that whole story about the guy that was sheep-dipped, meaning completely identity, completely just destroyed for common society and no one knows who the guy is anymore and no family members, nobody knows at all anything about him. They call it sheep-dipping. Oh, that's common within the Department of Defense, so... Uh... Uh, special operations people, uh, spies working behind enemy lines. That's that's uh, that's commonplace. Uh, we used to have a a uh, unit in uh, uh, Fort Belvoir, 7602nd Air Intelligence Wing, and they had uh, a particular section, the R A A R O A section, uh, that had people who had. Uh, virtually uh, one day no identity and the next day a hundred different identities um, and they were all sheep dipped. They were military people but they were completely sheep dipped so they could go out and do things uh, that are uh, probably against the law but a lot of things they could do clandestine entries, uh, covert operations, things like that that uh, uh, against UFO community, UFO people. I mean, they, they they could do it, and and they they're sheep dead for uh, a number of reasons. One reason is there's such a thing as the Posse Comitatus Act. Uh, that act was created in 1878. It prevents the United States military from enforcing civil law. With, then there's exceptions to that: riot, insurrections. Uh, the president can order the military to go in to do. To, to enforce a uh, law during riots in uh, California and Watts riots, mil- the, the military were came in. But but other than that, it, it prevents uh, the military from from forcing civil law. And so to get around that, they sheep dip the people, and now they're not technically in the military. So yeah, it happens all the time. Well, well, not just that, but it's a common government practice as well with our mutual background in law enforcement, uh, they do that and use it for witness protection as well. Right, Rick? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting conversation to say the least. What a great time, a great opportunity to go ahead and hang out with friends. Uh, hopefully everyone's had a, a good Sunday, Sunday night disclosure for that matter, where you're kind of hanging out, uh, having a good time with friends and you know, being serious about not being serious. But on that note, I want to thank everybody for coming out here tonight. The disclosure tonight, yes. Uh, we usually don't, we're not, usually not here on Sundays, but you know what? We're here today, and I want to thank everybody for coming out. Apparently, I had chat music going on all night, but I realized I want to thank everybody for coming out. I appreciate everybody for the super chats. That includes, who am I talking about? Rick Roberts, Faze Will, Brennan England. And Faze will again. Thank you, thank you much, everybody, for your love and support and support tonight. Holy cow! More importantly, I want to thank everybody for the great conversation that's been out here tonight. I want to thank those who have been part of the chat this evening. Who am I talking about? Well, we got Lee Dave, new uh, uh Lee, Led Dave. Uh, Where's it at? Uh, Led Dave just 
super chat. 20 bucks. Thank you very much, Led Dave. Appreciate the super chat. Hopefully you've had a good time this evening here in the Scotia tonight. Yes, I'm just getting ready for the Halloween spectacular that we're going to have here on the Scotia tonight. We take Halloween seriously. It's a good thing. It's a good time. It's a good opportunity for us all to come together uh, to have a good time. Yes, music is drowning. Let me go ahead and kick that down. More importantly, I want to thank everybody who has been in the chat for this conversation tonight. That includes the participants we have. Ann Joanne, Amiga Rules, Brett Perryman, Brian Morgan, Charles Kerr, Dirk Ridley, Eli McGinnis, Fast Mama Jama, Jan, thank you very much. Uh, Kathy Kelly Bro with your piercing blue eyes. Last of the finest, Led Dave, Light Doc, Mike Disclosure, Neil Carr, Neil Morgan, Niles Guy, Pete Lebel Resonate, Serge Cardio, Sergi Cardio, Shelly's been here, not Shelly Montgomery, but Shelly. Good to see you, Shelly. The Demon has been here along with Raz Mataz. Great to have everybody coming around here this evening on Disclosure today. And more importantly, it's not just about the people who have given us super chats, about the people in the, in the, in, out in the chat who have been here. It's about the people who have been in the back this evening. I want to thank everybody for coming out. That includes Brian Pemble. Thanks for coming out today, Brian. Hey, thank you guys very much. Uh, I only caught the last half of it, but great show. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Also want to thank Glenn Forbes. Thanks for coming out today, Glenn. Thanks, mate. Only caught the last half hour, but always uh, much appreciated. I'll watch in the morning. Matt Ramon, thanks for coming out today, Matt. Hey, thanks. And thanks, Rick, for stopping by and uh, answering some of them questions. I really appreciate it, brother. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Absolutely. Oh, I like the hat, man. I like yes. the hat. <laughs> Want to thank Michael Suckloff. Thanks for coming in today, Michael. Michael Suckloff. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> You're going to get it, boy. I'll tell you. That. Uh, yeah, it's the first th mean. The one time of the year I can say Michael Suckloff. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming out today, Michael. Also want to thank you, Nick. Thanks for coming out today, Nick. Nanya Business. Thanks for coming out here today, Susan Ford. All the way, our little Aussie friend from Australia. What a great show, Thomas. What an absolutely great show. Oh, my God. Thank you, Rick, for coming today. It was awesome. Yeah. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Absolutely. Want to also want to thank Rick Roberts. Thanks for coming out today, Rick. Three times. Congratulations on 7,000. Onward to 8,000. Uh, we'll get to 8,000 next, my friend. Also want to come in today, Tony. Thanks for coming in, my friend. Appreciate you being here. Hey, thanks, Tom. And uh, happy belated birthday to Mike. And thanks for Rick for stopping by. Talking about Mike thank disclosure. You. Uh, 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 thanks for coming in today, Mike. <laughs> It was supposed to be my day off, but it was another fun show tonight, Thomas. I'm glad you I did know. It. You know, we can blame on this. The man who bailed before everybody else, Patrick, is like, are we having a show today? It's like, oh, I guess, but I had to get the, I had to get the show put together for Sunday, for Monday, Tuesday, but either way. No, I'm glad you did it, and so is everybody else. It was fun tonight. Yeah. Okay, everyone got a kick out of it. Did I, did I thank FaZe Will for coming out today? I don't think I did. Uh, no, not yet. Treat. Yeah, trick or treat, uh, Thomas. Good, good trick show. or treat. Uh, 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 trick or treat. Three. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming Suck out. Suck some blood. Suck some blood tonight. Ah, you better believe it. Also, want to thank uh, Reality Check Hollywood Harold. Thanks for coming out. Wouldn't have missed it, man. Wouldn't have missed it. A little bit more relaxed tonight. I like. Yeah. I like this format. Seven days of fucking week. Who would have thought? All yeah, right. yeah, who would have? We just jump from five to seven. <laughs> oh, boy. It's the audience hey, benefit. Two, two weeks in a row, Thomas. Two weeks in a row. I know. And Thomas, we had to go to the office. He's complaining. He's like, oh, I can only do an hour now. I have to go to the office now. No, when I go into the office, trust me, it's going to be like three days a week. We're going to be start probably starting an hour earlier at 6 p.m. Pacific because I'm getting up at 5 a.m. So I'm going to have to start earlier so I can go to bed earlier because they want us to come into the office three days a week, three days in consecutive. So it's going to be fun. It's all right, Michael, pick up on those other days. I know, we'll get to that one. Also want to thank Rick Doty. Thanks for coming out today, Rick. Oh, 
Oh, you're very, very, very welcome. Uh, hey, Mike, uh, put in for overtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not with friends and family. There's no overtime. Trust me. No, yeah, when it yeah, comes I, down to uh, your salary, there is no overtime. That's right. That's, that's right. That's right. And as we usually say yeah. at the end of every one of our episodes, the disclosure tonight: eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. But wait, 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 wait. Where's that at? I need to fix this one. Ah, uh, where's it at? I know it's here. Get back to this one. Here we go. Go back to Party City where you belong. Absolutely. Good night, everybody. We'll catch you on the flip side. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.